Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we are taking another look at a keyboard from Red Dragon. I have had a great relationship with Red Dragon since I started doing this. And um, they're always like, hey, would you like to give this one a shot? I'm like, yes. They appreciate and have told me that they've incorporated some of my feedback into revisions of their new designs. So... I like the fact that I get a chance to take a look at keyboards. I probably, for some of them, for the more gaming-centric ones, I probably wouldn't take a look at. But I get to provide feedback and also, you know, see what is happening on the other side of the wall. Although it's not a wall, it's more like a, a division. Because, I mean, we all like keyboards, but, you know, gamers want them for one thing collectors for another, enthusiasts for another, programmers for another. So I do like the chance of being able to get my hands and, and be able to test all these different keyboards. Now, obviously today we are taking a look at the Yama, which is a full-size keyboard and has a number like 1920 different macro switches. So there's a lot that we can do with those extra switches. It looks like we have a rocker um, roller for volume control and it looks like it's rgb not rainbow though it does look like it's a connected cord but what i'll probably do is because i i've done it before but i haven't done it on video actually i did do it on video once but i deleted the file on accident um show the conversion of how to make a corded uh keyboard ported so that you can add a usb C port on there and then you don't have to worry about this cable getting kinked right there but without further ado let's go ahead and open up and see what we have waiting for us in the box all right so in the box we have a user manual which is just a simple guide on how to use the uh, keyboard and the controls that it has as well as the faqs about warranty we have a red dragon sticker sheet um, one of these days i'm going to make me a red dragon sticker bomb keyboard we have your standard wire, switch, and keycap puller. And we have four extra switches included, which is greatly appreciated. I'm always happy when manufacturers include extra switches because you never know what could go wrong with the switch. It is the cheapest thing on the keyboard to replace or have replacements of. So throwing in a couple of spare in there really makes the difference. And it goes a long way with building rapport with customers. All right, it's not lubricated, though... On most gaming keyboards, there they come non-lubricated. But I can't tell if it's a clicky or a tactile. I'm pretty sure it's a clicky. But I didn't quite see the click jacket. So out of curiosity. Oh, no, it's a tactile. Huh. Got a very sharp bump right there. But adding some lubrication to this is going to make a big difference but it's a little bit i'd say it's a medium tactile it's it's not quite as light as a brown but it's just only a tad stronger than a brown and yeah because there is no lubrication there is ping with the switch and here we are with the red dragon k550 yama and let me tell you this thing is a beast there's a reason why it comes in that big box. Now, it does have what feels like an aluminum top here. Let's see. Yeah. So, technically, I guess we've got an aluminum plate because that's, yep, that's where the switches are going into. Very interesting indeed. Aluminum. It actually doesn't sound as bad. It does not sound as bad as I thought it would. Just lubricating these switches, I think is gonna make a huge difference. So I'm definitely gonna come back to this keyboard because just because it's a gaming keyboard doesn't mean it has to not sound good. And I like the fact that it has this built-in um, wrist rest. Well, I guess I just don't know how to release it. Those are actually magnetic. All right. And of course, we are corded, and it looks like we actually have an extra USB port for the mouse dongle or a hub. Isn't that nice? Now, this is got to be... Oh. Okay. 
I have never seen this on a keyboard. This is new. So I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> we have two plugs. Is one for the USB and one for the keyboard? So this is, uh, this is new to me. This is definitely a new one on me. All right, Velcro straps. And two USB cables. Oh, okay. One's port. Okay. It is what I thought. So this is basically just an extender cable for that port. But we can plug just this one in. And that'll be for the keyboard. So let's make sure we can do that. All right. So there we go. There we are with the RGBs on. And it's looking quite nice. I honestly think that just lubricating the switches is going to make a huge difference. Oh, we do have kick-out feet, but they're side kick-out feet. So we're only going to have two different angles here. The design on this, I'm just, I mean, I guess because I don't usually buy gaming keyboards. It's just like, wow. Um, this, though, I would have rethought this because you can, you don't need two separate cables. Um, I mean, they could have just put a hub in there and then actually plug the keyboard on the inside to one of the hub ports. And that, that would have been that. So I don't know why they did this dual cable like that. Volume does work, but it doesn't have press. We don't have mute, but we have a mute right here. We have some um, multimedia function keys already programmed there. Let me see if we can figure out the lights. Yep. The cycles us through the colors. Well, we definitely have some bright RGBs. Let's see what we have under here. Oh, so this might be an older model. And I'm guessing, I, I don't know, because I don't keep up with the more gaming-centric models, though I really think I should. Um, this one is still using Otemu or Milmax-style hot swap sleeves, not sockets. These are sleeves. These are only going to work with certain uh, manufacturers. I mean, just I have them handy. Um, the Leo Bog uh, Gray Woods, they are also three pin and they have the nice skinnier legs. So these will actually will fit in here. Did I speak too soon? Oh. Maybe I did. That one pushed the pin all the way up into the body. Wow. was not expecting that. Alright, so that literally just pushed the pin all the way in. There's a possibility this won't work anymore. But... These should fit just fine. Into a Milmax socket. So probably going to have to stick with Red Dragon switches. Yeah, that's um, that's not good. Thankfully, Red Dragon has put out some decent switches, so at least there's a good choice of switches. But um, this tactile honestly isn't that bad with a little lubrication. I think it'll it would perform just fine. Let's check out these stabilizers. Well, that just didn't want to come out. All right, these stabilizers are, they're minimally lubricated, and it seems like they are only lubricated with oil, not grease. So I don't know why they would uh, not use grease, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, That was truly beyond me. And I did scratch up the plate. They're just trying to get this out. Oh, that's, that's not good. Oh, it's that light. The light is sticking out above the PCB. So that's why. See, this LED is not surface mount. It is literally sticking out. So that's why the stabilizers had a hard time coming out. And going back in. But there we go. Locking back into 
place. And obviously it is north facing and only three pin compatible with the, yeah, that one works fine, but the um, other switch did not. Surprisingly, these stabilizers don't sound awful. Um, now, there doesn't seem to be much uh, dampening in here whatsoever, it's sounding pretty hollow. Now, I do know this uses the pro version of the software, so the pro version will allow you to map a function layer. Though, since we're on a full size, I mean, I'm not saying you won't need function layers, but full size is usually you can just grab, plug in, and go. You don't have to worry about it. These macro keys, you can program these to do anything, and you can actually, um, I haven't gone through the process on this keyboard, but basically it's a, I think it's press and hold record, do what you want to do, then press and hold record again, and then press the key that you want it saved to, and you press, press and hold, or it might be different. I, I, it's, I've done it on so many keyboards now that I forget, but I know Red Dragon does have a guide on their website for all their keyboards on how to program from the keyboard. I personally like to program it from within the um, software itself, but sometimes you're on the fly. Hey, I want to add a new one. Um, it would be nice. I know it kind of sounds silly, but maybe like a little whiteboard you could pull out and then write down what you have, what map to in case. But that's neither here nor there. Or little sticker, whiteboard stickers that you could put on top. That's just me. Um, they are, uh, I guess they're called soft buttons, but they're hard. So some of these already seem to be programmed into, but like screen maximize and minimize and stuff like that. So nothing too serious. So we do have these buttons and I'm going to assume they're probably connected to tactile buttons. They're not actual switches. Only the actual keys are going to have switches. We do have, like I said, the uh, purple dustproof stem uh, medium tactile switch, uh, which is, is all right. It would be a lot better if it was lubed. We do have what appears to be ABS shine through key caps in the OEM profile. Um, because it is north facing they do come across quite nice i personally i'm not the biggest fan of this uh, futuristic font um but i do like big ones i wish they would put bigger legends on here and just let them shine on through um i'm also more of a fan of keeping the same caps or capitalization on the modifiers but again these are just little nitpicks of mine um so if you're a gamer this keyboard is not only going to offer you the ability to program different light modes and go to them directly or even program your light modes per key rgb on the keyboard but it'll allow you to program even on the fly macros that you might need to repeat you know many times while either gaming or See, that's the thing. This could come in handy for programming. There's a lot of times that I'm working on a particular project and it's just easier for me to go manually and, you know, do something to 15 files than write a script to actually do it. So, but if I could have that one command that I need to apply to each of those files and I could just macro, it, you know, program it straight into a macro, then get going, that's going to save me a lot of time. So there might be some worth in in looking at a gaming keyboard if you're a programmer not because you want all the pretty rgb and you want a big crazy board but because it has the on the fly macro programming that could make that could actually save you time on repetitive tasks all right uh, so to record like i said you press the record button you do the macro or what you want to repeat you press the key that you wanted to save it to, and then you hit record, and that's it. The macro is saved. So that's a pretty easy and on-the-fly way to do it. Um, like that it has the medium control, media control, and it has the 12 um, programmable G keys. These are already programmed and are for something already. And again, as I said, this uses the pro version of the software, so it does allow you to map function layers and have your different profiles this is an interesting full-size keyboard from red dragon um like i said i think that because of that on the fly macro programming i'm gonna give it a shot i'm gonna see 
if I can actually use it and if it does increase my productivity. I think that having those 12 macro programmable on the fly keys would or could be beneficial to those of us that spend a lot of time coding and sometimes are like, all right, should I spend a day writing a script that'll take care of this for me in five minutes? Or should I spend half a day actually doing it manually instead of spending the day writing the script? If this can save you time on typing out and punching out repetitive tasks, then that could save you some money. And as we all know, time is money. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed my quick overview of the Red Dragon K550 Yama. Um, it is a full-size keyboard with a rocker with 12 macro keys. Um, I will come back to this keyboard because I want to see how good I can make it sound because it is pretty feature rich. Um, and as far as, I mean, I don't know too many custom keyboards that have the macro keys, but that's neither here nor there. I do hope that you enjoyed the review. I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test of this keyboard stock. If you have any questions or comments or anything that you'd like for me to take a look at when I do come back to it, uh, please leave a comment down below. Throwing me a thumbs up or subscribe really does go a long way. And if I didn't earn that, please let me know what I can do to earn that thumbs up. Anyway, I want to wish you all an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.